All right. I think we're live. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello. Can someone let us know if you can hear us? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear us? You're of. <laughs> You're of. Well, I can Whoa. hear that. Wow. Jesus, that's some uh, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Might, uh, Why is that so loud? Welcome to technology. <laughs> One day I'll have this all sorted out. Let's go. But not today. When I play air guitar, it looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you remember when we were a good football team? Because when was I, that? I don't remember. Uh, welcome to Here We Crow, episode 85. Five, five, five. Welcome, Lauren. 85, hello. Welcome, Sam. Hello, Daniel. Sadly, we're not joined by Ben this week again. Uh, we send out our love to Ben. We don't know what's going on with him. but uh, Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben. We hope he's, he, he told me he wasn't going to watch. He's working tonight. in the backyard. I told him you were hosting and he wasn't interested. Yeah, he's actually doing up his backyard for the end of year Here We Crow party. Uh, <laughs> and he's, uh, he's also uh, transcribing uh, the Christmas poem as well, I think. Yes. He's oh, got, a, yes. got a head start on that. Yeah. yeah, he's got to back it up this year. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's no mean feat, I'm sure. But he has said to uh, Lauren some stats. Oh, did hasn't, you want me to read them? Yeah, I thought that was just what happened. I have not yeah. been organising hey, that part. That's but okay. Thankfully, because Ben's so organised, it's right at the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give well me done. a moment. Uh, the Tell TA lap, uh, Wi-Fi has to work. Tell us about the number 85. Uh, debut player <laughs> for 85, the 85th debut player, would be Tom Gilligan. Oh. Three games played from 97 to 97. 198 centimetre Runkman drafted number 13 in the 1996 draft. He played in the first showdown against Port Adelaide and then just one more. Sadly, he wasn't the captain because that would have been a great pun to make a lot. <laughs> I'm just reading Ben's notes, so I'm not making any puns. You need to put more gusto into them, Lauren. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Kate did a way better job last week. 2021, uh, the AFLW win over Suns, 85 points whoop, whoop. to 15. Mm. Uh, Ponta with the four goal hole oh, that game too. I miss Daniel Ponta. Ponce, bring it back. Mm. And uh, of course we have our 1985ers. Uh, and this One of list, them is you, Lauren. This list is a little bit sad, I think. Bernie Vince. <laughs> oh, the burn. <laughs> Bernie Vince was uh, born in 1985, so it's good to know I share an age with that man. Uh, Fergus Watts. <laughs> you is share there. an age with that man. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Fergus Watts and Brad Symes, also oh, 1985. Fergus, Watts. Fergus, the only Fergus ever to be on the Adelaide Crows list. Is that the only Fergus in the AFL? Oh, look, there oh, probably oh, was back some. in the day. Yeah, there mm. would have been, you know, there's no, no one's been called Fergus in this century. But yep. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> anyway, surely. <laughs> that's the stats. That's, that's the stats. Thanks, you know, Ben. And just speaking of Fergus, uh, I was thinking, you know, do you ever think about those people with like old, old lady names or old man names and just think, you know, like Bronwyn, like who it's calls their kid Bronwyn? It's actually funny you say that, Dan, because um, <laughs> oh, no, I've got a friend called Bronwyn who's a like kid? My, oh, not a oh, like a young a kid, baby. Oh Here's no, my baby Bronwyn. <laughs> no offense, if you're baby Bronwyn. Gonna call you baby Bronwyn. <laughs> yeah. Or if there's any Bronwyns listening, that's just an example. Someone yeah. the other day uh, posted a TikTok and they were like, "I'm having a baby boy, and I don't know any boys' names that are like old and like." Kind of unique. So here's some I wrote. LeBronwyn. Morris. <laughs> LeBronwyn. <laughs> no. That's, oh, that's Mavis. actually funny. Morris. Mavis Morris. Is great. What yeah. about Hector? Oh, I actually don't um, want Hector's all right. Hectorville. R- Randy. Mm. Watson. Or oh, what about yeah. this one? Dante. Oh. oh. No, nah, you can't be. I actually, what about no. Violet had a kid at her school called Dante. Yeah, well, I think that's actually a cool name. And what the about is a crow supporter. What about so Jimbo? Jimbo. Yeah. That's or a two Americans. Boris. Boris. Boris Jimbo's is all right. What about Gaston? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially with me, like Gaston. Gaston. I'll stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't mind Morris. Um, sensible asks if Mavis is all right. I don't know how he guessed um, my uh, baby that's due tomorrow's name. Mavis <laughs> might. We, we actually aren't opening the phone lines tonight, so Mavis won't be able to call us. But yeah, yeah, sorry, Mavis. Um, Asa. 
Vardy has someone in his uh, daughter's class called Acer. Oh, they, like saw the the computer. Computer, they saw the computer logo and they yeah. thought, that looks sick. That's actually a cool name. Uh, they, yeah. We haven't even got to a segment yet. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is how much we want to talk about the crows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so That's we pretty are, close to my name, Yoav. We are going to talk about uh, how the crows lost to the Ds by 15 points, 8-15-63 to 10-18-78. Took the scores down this time so I didn't get put on the spot again <laughs> yeah. last time. Um, and then this week we head over to Marvel on Saturday to take on the Blues who are... 4-0, uh, no losses <laughs> so far. So it's looking ominous. Oh, but we'll happened? get into that, won't we? But first. Are we doing this? Yes. Oh. Music. <laughs> Gold rings. It's always a bit sad hearing Shane McAdam's voice in that, isn't it? Mm. It's fine. Mm. Mm. At least he didn't play last week. Yeah, that's great too. Yeah. yeah. So what's pumping you up, Lauren? Well, speaking of names, uh, something that's pumping me up, uh, again on TikTok because that's all I do these days is watch footy and TikTok. But there is a gentleman who bought his son an octopus for a pet. Now, I want to try to make this sh- short. Now, the kid want, has wanted an octopus his whole life, his whole life of eight years. He has wanted an octopus. <laughs> and this man. Eight years, eight tentacles. Yeah. Dr. Tim, his name is, he has gone to, he has literally studied how to take care of octopi so they can get this octopus so he's got the octopus Mm. they buy the octopus the octopus comes the octopus is way bigger than they expected so he has to buy a whole new tank builds a whole new tank the octopus they have for two months and the octopus gets goes in the little cave lays eggs do you know what that means octopus is going to die bitches now the octopus has laid the eggs the octopus is about to die because all it does is take care of the eggs and then it dies. So the eggs are probably not fertilised because they got this octopus off some random guy. Anyway, it turns out the eggs are fertilised. The adult octopus has not died and they have 52 baby octopi. Oh, he goodness. has literally built another tank to breed shrimp to feed the 52 <laughs> octopi. Anyway... He put out today. We need help naming the octopi. Oh. So I've given him, I've given him some um, octopi names. names. Right. Okay. Trentacle. <laughs> oh my god! Here we go. Bobtopus. Ventacle. Legsalus. <laughs> Veruca. Huh? Veruca. Oh yeah. You guys don't get that. No. Nah. Oh yeah. Eight Ver- arms. Yeah. Veruca Salt's album. Eight arms to hold you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Obscure. That's very. Check obscure. out TikToktopus. Uh, it is a, a wild ride. I can't believe these out, people then. are doing this. I think this guy has literally quit his job to look after the octopus. Yeah, right. Anyway, it's it's a it's a time. I don't have TikTok. I think I'm too old. Yeah. Well, you're not because <laughs> you're, you're younger than me, than me yeah. and um, you just have you know you're only as young as you believe, Sam. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, Sam, on that note, what's pumping you up? Uh, Apart from look, your I impending baby this week? Yeah, maybe? yeah, my baby used to actually tomorrow. If you don't tomorrow, say that. Uh, <laughs> Liz, yeah, Lizzie's right. certainly pumped up. It's the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it described that way. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it is, uh, it's 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 an interesting time, as you no doubt are fully aware. Are you the, quietly uh, shitting your pants? I, I'm not scared. I'm not nervous, really. I'm just, I just want it to happen now because yeah. it's just, it's happening. It's going to happen probably in the next few days. I yep. just want to, just want it let's done. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. yeah let's ha- I bet yeah, Lizzie really wants it uh, over again. She a absolutely <laughs> does. Yeah. Poor Lizzie. Sending our love to Lizzie um, yeah. on behalf of the pod. I know that we're the bane of your existence, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we love right. you. Yeah. Thankfully, she let, still let me do this, which is quite amazing, really. Here comes Jake. <laughs> it is. Oh, Jakey D with the fried chicken. Oh, yes. Jake, Jake of yes. the TA Sweet. providing us some chicken and chips. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Jake. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're sort of kind of sponsored now. So. <laughs> Taylor Swift was here earlier as well. Add um, some sweet cheddar fries. Playing yeah. home. Uh, we'll post Del. <laughs> Tom we'll reckons we should call our baby Del. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll post a we'll post a photo Apple. of me and, and, ta- Tom. Me and Taylor nice Swift you. later. What well. about iMac? <laughs> iMac, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's go for a full hipster. I'll tell you what's been pumping me up with my spare time I've had this week is purple pingers on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> or X. Yeah, uh, just reading all of the uh, the press he's been getting. If you're not following it, um, yeah, essentially he's uh, you know listing vacant properties that are just basically like um, what do you call them? like derelict properties that uh, no one's doing anything with uh, for squatters to go and, uh, you know, occupy. 
I don't even think they're necessarily derelict. They're just ones that people are holding for yeah. tax reasons or whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, in the media, they're trying to spin it that he's just getting people to go and squat at regular vacant houses, but it's not the case. But anyway, it's really interesting. Lots of press around it. Lots of, um, you know, shit talk. It's it's good read if you're into that. He was on the project, I think, last night. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, shitrentals.org is still going. So if you've been in a shit rental or had a shit landlord, you should go review that stuff. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what's pumping us up this week. Mm. We're we yeah. talking about the stupid game. Now we oh, can yeah. Talk Do about we have a stupid game? Should be a rip snorter. Yeah. That's my favorite <laughs> button, by the way. Yeah. You like that one. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so as I mentioned at the top, uh, we did lose to the D's at Adelaide Oval, as we probably expected. Uh, we peeled back the margin in the last quarter. We looked pretty free in the last quarter, um, which was too little too late. Uh, we had the same uh, problems as the week before with uh, intercept defenders absolutely killing us this week. It was our, our old foe, Jake Lever um, and Stephen May, who we couldn't injure any more than we probably should have, <laughs> <laughs> when we probably should have. Yeah. And uh, we have been absolutely picked apart in the media yet again and probably deserve it. So, mm. but, you know, uh, not uh, I, I did actually get called a happy clapper on X the, uh, the other you night. You didn't. And, and Stop happy clapping, Dan. And look, that actually pissed me right off, I'll be honest. <laughs> 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 I do not consider myself a happy clapper. But, you know, um, this person was saying we should trade Joshua Shelley, which I disagree with. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. But, um, you know, to put a little bit of a positive spin, obviously we got to see Luke Nankervis out there, which was awesome. We got to see Braden Cook out there, which was awesome. Um, Paddy Parnell, not as awesome, but also got injured. So mm. won't be seeing him again this week, un- uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for those who don't want him picked. Um <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I think Dawson probably played his best game of the year so far. Yeah. Um, Mark Keane had another great game. Uh, what else, Lauren? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've already, like, forgotten about the game, to be honest. Um, it was so long ago as well. Yeah, it was, Thursday night. Mm. Yeah, look, my only real takeaway from it, and it's been discussed on Crowcast this week, um, but is Joshua, Joshua Shelley is not playing in the right position. Like, he's clearly um, struggling in this whatever – you know, high forward defensive role that they've given him, which I don't know, is that the same one that Pedler was playing the other week, after, you know, before he got dropped? Yeah. Look, this ki- This is a 20-year-old kid. Sorry, 21. He's 21 now. He's a 21-year-old kid. He's been told, as we have all been told, that he's getting um, CBAs and he's going to be playing midfield this year. Now, he has barely had a s- sent about his attendance uh, this year. He's had maybe two or three, I don't know, maybe a few more, but he's like he's barely had a touch of it. He's playing in a role he doesn't want to play in. Like, I understand, yes, he's a professional athlete. He should be playing where he's told to play. But, like, his heart is not in that position. He wants to be playing in the midfield. We are going to get his best football if we put him in there. Just do it. Mm. Like, I don't know what we're waiting for. I know, like... You know, people kind of like had a go at him about some crucial mistakes that he made at the end of the game. And yes, like, again, he's a maturing player. He made some silly mistakes, but, you know, he's not the only person on the ground. Like, was Tex calling for that mark that he accidentally spoiled? Like, was Tex using his voice in that situation? We don't know the context. And, you know, he's trying to play a bit of hero ball because the game's on the line. Unfortunately, in these like apprenticeship roles that we seem to always give these kids that are meant to be mids, like this half or flank role or the halfback, flank role is just burning some of these guys out like mm. chase jones is another example you know he was um earmarked as a as a mid when he first came in and he's now a half back and that's kind of it like, it seems well, like he's and he's not very good at that no. either yeah yeah i don't know like <clears throat> i understand you know that they want to develop players and you know but i just don't know why we keep playing them out of position it's just kind of baffling mm. to me and i think there's there's an element of people management in that like you, as a 21-year-old kid, like, he's not going to have, maybe have the emotional maturity of someone like Rory Led, mm. for example. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's showing in his game because he's not playing where he's been told that he's going to play and, ha- and you know, he hasn't been put in that position. That's just my two cents on that one. Um, 
as for the rest of the game, oh, can we just forget it? Well, what is, this year is a write-off. I was just, it was, <laughs> seems like it is a write-off, doesn't it? But I was just going to say with Laird and um, Crouch as well, you know, obviously that's come back into the into the limelight um, and completely correctly as well. Uh, that mix is not working no matter what. Um, so, you know, I don't know that Crouch or Laird are necessarily like, you can't single one of them out. Um, it's got to be one or the other as we've all said all along mm. um but it's not working stop ever having those two in the mid at the same time um it just can't happen well you know i just think there needs to be more rotation and i think well you know we jokingly said to jake saligo last week after the interview i said to him i was like let's go into nixie's office you demand some midfield minutes mate like you need to like start like be serious about it you Do know you show you your passion Do you and think that's why you got it well <laughs> he either did or david king told Matthew Nix to put him, <laughs> put him in the middle. So it was yeah. either one of those. Um, but, you know, obviously he had a fantastic game, probably, you know, his breakout game um, so far of his career. And, you know, I just think give him as many CBAs as Laird. Like, yeah. why not? If, you know, Crouch had reduced time on ground, then just give that to Lairdy or put him in the back or whatever or put Dawson back and bring Dowling in, like do something. Nixie's made a pretty big statement after the game. Um, in the press conference saying that players are out of form and it's got, you know, the selection table is, you know, where things are going to change. All right, let's see actual legitimate changes. Don't bring in Shoal after you've dropped him or don't bring in Barry or don't bring in Peddler. Well, you should bring in Peddler, but you know what I mean? Like, don't bring in the same players. Let's see some new blood. I want to know who the players are that he thinks are out of form. Yeah, like, I'm actually interested thing. because – I mean, really, I can't pinpoint a single player who I would say has been absolutely rubbish. I mean, I could say Brody Smith three weeks ago, but you didn't drop him. So no. yeah, I'm very interested to know him, who you think's out of form. If you didn't drop Brody Smith the previous three weeks, you're probably not dropping him on that game yeah. that he just had. So, and then, you know, you say players out of form, then you drop Barry, then you bring him in as a sub. Like, I'm, I'm very confused. Yeah. So I hope we get some clarity on Thursday. For me, um, you know, if you're not going to that usual sort of Berry, um, Peddler, uh, who else? I'm just th- reeling off names. Um, those those young guys that mm. sort of seem to be on the fringe. Like, Fogarty is out of form to me. Like, he yep. does the one or two things per game. Like, why is he exempt from being dropped now? Because mm. he's mm. in the leadership group or something. But, yeah. Um, you know, I think he should be given a break, and someone should be like, brought in, like Gallant or something. Yeah, and like, do they think do they think someone like Hinge is out of form because he can't hit a target, or yeah. Dawson? Because, like we said, Dawson's probably had his best game of the year so far, mm. and it's four rounds later. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I am interested. I will I would love to see if they actually make some it's like you know swinging the axe, so to speak, dimmer style. It seems pretty rare that they see what the fans see, um, which is a worry. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I could see one force change this week, Parnell for Shoal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, well, would, I wouldn't even so much care about how dysfunctional we look if, if it felt like we were trying things and, mm. and, and mixing things around and, and actually playing players where we think they might be best. But the fact that we, we look shit, we're losing – and we're also just playing players that uh, you know probably aren't going to be part of our next premiership side. Just makes this year feel like a total waste. I've, I feel I have to say I'm close to checking out. Like, yeah, mm. or giving a shit about this year anymore. Like, yeah. it's 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 oh, so I'm un- done. I reckon. Is, is Already, it, I'm just it like, what are we redundant. doing? Well, it's one 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 team in the last 25 years has made finals after going 0 and 4. So, um, yeah, so it's if you, like, yeah, if you're just going to keep doing the same thing week in week out, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Um, uh, on that as well, like they seem to have this game plan that they've tried every game so far this year that just isn't working. It's mm. not It's not leading to attack. It's not having us make any scores. Yeah. Like next to none. Like mm. we're scoring like three and four goals a, qu- a half, yeah. for example. And then lo and behold, somewhere in the second half, the, the shackles come off. Yeah. Seems to be in every game. Yeah. And something goes right for a quarter. Yeah. And, and we go, oh... They were able to do that when the shackles came off. Yeah. Well, we, we, Why isn't we, that the first thing they do? We were able to do it all last year. Yeah. That's the stupid thing. Well, um, what is this game plan that they're running through in the first half every week and it's, and it's just not working and they're just sticking with it? Yeah. Like, what like, is that? I, I see a lot of people talking about how we, um, we've we obviously worked on our, the defensive side of our, um, of our game, which... 
you know, he's absolutely fine. We we obviously were an exciting team last year, but uh, you don't you tend to find that it's not the you know the the really good attacking teams that win premierships. So I understand the the slot the slight shift in philosophy, but to just throw all of that flair and excitement that we had last year which actually worked quite a lot of the time we didn't have as good a year last year as we probably think we did really if you go back through all the results no, but it's uh w- w- like the fact that we all we probably should have made finals was a um i don't know probably a bit of an anomaly more than anything but um we were an exciting team to watch we were fun and it looked like we were progressing in the right direction we, we just looked like the kind of team that never gave up and like there yeah. was always still a chance to win a game yeah it's in the dying stages, but looking yeah. at it now, it looks like our natural instincts to play footy are being stifled yeah, in some way. It does, yeah, for a whole you know? like half or three quarters of yeah, a game. Yeah, like just let them roll with it. Yeah, it feel you know we don't want to be a robotic team. And that's yeah. the other thing. Just like play. I get the playing a role. They're all playing a role, but let their natural talent, you know, come out. Like I said with Rochelle, like let him play with his natural talent and his gifted. You know, Isaac Rankin, Chuck, yes, he is a great midfielder, but he is potent forward and we need that right now. So just let him play in there. And that's exactly the point. Like we, even though we were losing games last year, we were an exciting team to watch because we pushed teams to the edge. This year we're unwatchable. Like it's shit football. It's (laughs) boring. It is sitting there at the game. It's boring. It's riddled with mistakes. There's no highlights. I just sit there. Yeah. Drinking a beer slowly, watching and and almost wondering why I'm there. Yeah, it's like, well, well this isn't entertaining. Yeah, the crowd's like dead because they're not they're bored. Yeah, I was thinking ahead to the showdown, like, oh, I don't want to go. <laughs> Let's go watch it. I'll just, just stay watch home. It at one of our thanks. houses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that doesn't sound appealing to me at all. I don't want to make this sound like I'm jumping off the crows in any way. I'm just sort <laughs> of losing just losing faith in th- that this year is going to be positive in any way i yeah. think um it's just it's frustrating it to watch feels like it's going to be a too little too late kind of year like yeah. if we find form it's going to be at the back end of the year and it'll probably be through what the fans have said all along yep. playing the kids and seeing some some promise and that's fine i like i said last week i don't care that we're losing games i just want us to do it in the right way yeah. it's not it it losing games this year is not a problem uh, and as we've said you know numerous times that you know uh, us climbing up the ladder is not going to be this this linear climb we are going to have dips yeah. and this year is probably going to be that dip and that's absolutely fine. Um, I don't know, like on this game on the weekend though, like I we I was sitting there, I didn't, I know we only lost by 15 points. I didn't feel like we were ever going to win no. the game. That's Melbourne looked like they had, um, had some levels that uh, we didn't have and to be fair, it's not through clean football or anything like that. They've just got, they've just got talent that we yeah. don't have and in the right spots. Look at their forward line. Their forward line's crap, really. Yeah. Like, I know Cozzy Pickett's got a ton of talent, um, but, you know, Bailey Fritch is a reasonably average player, but he's he's something that we don't have. Mm. We don't have a mid-sized forward anymore since McAdam left. Yeah. Um, we've either got big lumbering forwards that if they don't take the mark are absolutely hopeless or tiny forwards. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I think we're really missing a like a Tom Lynch type player. We're missing like those mid-sized players everywhere when you think about it. Yeah, we are. We're a small side. Yeah, I, I, we're either small or big. <laughs> like, we don't have anything in between. On the trip home from the podcast last week, I was like, I need this week, I need to do our height, like find out where we are on the height scale compared yeah. to other teams and I completely forgot to do it. So Because we don't have, like, everyone always <laughs> talks about how we need a big bodied midfielder. You know, we obviously need that mid-sized forward and probably liking it in the back line as well. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, let's um, get into votes so we don't have to keep talking about this game. <laughs> yes. Uh, who, who'd you have, Lauren? Uh, I forgot to do mine, so I'm just going to basically copy mm. Ben's. Uh, <laughs> three, three for Jake Saligo, um, obviously. Uh, two for Jordan Dawson. Um, Ben's gone one for Brody Smith. Yeah. Uh, he said 649 meters gained at 78 percent efficiency. Mm, he told me this on the phone, and I wanted to rip into him. Um, Brody Smith was fine. Was sure. Okay. I'm going to go Mark yeah. Keane for one instead. Nice. Yeah. Cool. I hope you're recording things somewhere. Someone will. Uh, ben Sam, will later, right? Uh, I went three to Saligo, two to Dawson and one to Keane. So, oh, um, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's enough um, for that. Oh, uh, no, no, you go. You're Hi, I'm, Hi, I'm Tyson <laughs> Edwards. <laughs> you're such a quiet, <laughs> quiet I thought I pressed the wrong button for a second. Oh, Lauren, who have you got? That's okay. Max Michael Annie. Nice. <laughs> who did Ben have? 
Max Michael. Luke Nankervis. Oh, Luke Nankervis. All right, Sam? Yeah, I went Michael Anning as well. Oh, I yeah. went Luke Nankervis. Oh, look at that. Even split. Two and two. Also, I just wanted Both to bring up good. something that made me really angry on the weekend. And I know- Is this I, for your segment, the bads? No, no, no. Just oh, from, This okay. is from the game. <laughs> I was really frustrated with Riley O'Brien's game again on the weekend. Mm. My God, he's an annoying player. I know Max Gorn is an absolute gun and he's very unlikely to beat him. And I know he got a ton of hit outs. But if anyone can show me that anything he did was effective, um, I'll uh, eat a hat. He was very, very average on the weekend. Zero marks again. He's yeah. taken four marks, four marks for the he year. Dropped so four marks. He dropped so year. many marks when we needed him at crucial time. That's the thing. That's what I said last week. Show me a time he takes a mark where it's important. Mm. Like we just need that clutch mark. Never. He, I feel like he used to be able to do it sometimes. He, like in the back line, he used to take some clutch. I reckon a few years ago, we used to rave about how good he was around the ground. Yeah. Not not like at an amazing, like not sort of talking, no. you know, um, Luke Jackson style around no, the ground type of work, but still. Like he, he uh, won a BNF off the back of some of that stuff. So He got more meters gained than Crouch. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, Crouch is another story. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, we probably didn't go into detail because it hurts too much, but yeah. Crouch has 10 kicks and 20 handballs for fuck's sake. Come yeah, on. yeah, I know. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, and Tom, about um, Fritch, yeah, sorry. I probably went, I went a bit hard on Fritch. Um, I don't think he's a bad player. <laughs> I just th- mean that, like, you know, Melbourne's – you don't write home about Melbourne's forward line, do you? So yeah. – um, but he, he – like, uh, how many times was he free on the lead taking an easy mark? Why, we, I don't think we've done that all year. No. no, no. <laughs> uh, because – and you look at, you know, again, we've been killed by intercept defenders every week. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't – again, I can't remember who it was for Gold Coast, but the other – the last three weeks it's been, like, those – typical big name players that just killed us that yep. people that we should be able to put time into which we can't and that's ball movement as well like yeah. we just look so stagnant you just watch us you get the ball in an attacking manner um you look like we've got the jump on the defense and we just stand there hold it up and decide what we're going to do with it which is just a complete like um you know mistrust in the game plan of what yeah. nix is putting out so i think i think nix has got a lot to not a lot to blame uh, be blamed for here but yeah all right well, We've talked enough about that. I we think have. it's time for your segment. I think, oh, no. Well, I think we're getting... Are we, are we are running we? a bit close? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Should we do mine after? Well, yeah, let's do yours after. Yeah. Look, let's get in. We're going to do... Quick pause, people. We've we're got gonna, something exciting. We're going to get our Nuffy on the line. Do we? <clears throat> and uh, we'll be right back. Very exciting. Stay tuned.
Right. Is it better vertical oh. or um, sideways for you matter. guys? Why are we small again? Sam will figure it out. Don't worry. Sam. All right. You tell me how you want me and I'll be home all yours. Okay. I think we're back. Hey, there he is. I better turn off YouTube as well, hey? Yeah, please. Yeah, you're better. All right. Tell me when you're ready. <laughs> All right, can everyone hear us again? Yep. Yep. We're back. We're back. Hey, All hey. right. All right. Let's go. Press the button. Enough is enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Another team's enough. That's right. It's another team's enough. And we have got Carlton this week, as you all know, as we said at the top of the show, it's a mean feat playing Carlton over in Marvel. And who better to get on the line than our usual Carlton Nuffy, Jason Morrison. Welcome back, Jason. Friends, hello. Uh, Dan, happy 40th birthday, by the way. Thank oh, you. we hadn't actually mentioned that. Sam, I was going to do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> yes. And, and we've actually got oh, a... I'm really sorry. I know no, it's okay. I know it's my birthday tomorrow, but we've actually got a surprise for you. We've actually teamed you up with another Nuffy tonight, a surprise Nuffy, uh, a, a surprise, surprise Carlton Nuffy. Premiership player <laughs> who uh, played 278 games for Carlton. He's an AFL Hall of Famer. He's a two-time All-Australian. He actually debuted against the Crows back in 1992 at Princess Park. Now, have you, is that any clue for you, Jason, <laughs> who this might be on the line? Not off the top of my head. Oh, oh no. I wasn't expecting any. This is the first uh, player um, enough, I think so. of when I think of 90s um, Carlton players and people <laughs> of, it, of it, Tony. It doesn't happen to be this bloke over here. It's not Stephen Kernahan. <laughs> 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 of, uh, oh, of Tony Modra fame uh, in, uh, you know, Tony Modra for Adelaide, this person for Victoria. So maybe maybe uh, he can introduce himself. No, he's gone. Are you there? <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Yeah, I introduced myself, oh. Jake. You're just disappointing, mate. Let him know, let, let him know who he's talking oh, to, just, mate. Oh, mate, do I really have to say my own name? It's embarrassing. (laughs) (laughs) Jason, it's Anthony Bloody Cudafides, mate. We have have the one and only Anthony Cudafides on the line. When you said you had a player. (laughs) Cuda's here to talk about the game. Here I am. I've just left dinner with Ange Christou, right? (laughs) The Carney was there, Alex (laughs) Kinchotta. And then there was... Also, Matt Cottrell, who just won the game for the Blues. I've left there to come and speak to you, and this is what I get. Oh, <laughs> this is oh my God. Talk about oh, like, the of the ego. <laughs> I mean, Cooter, I even, uh, I even got the best of Wikipedia for those stats, so uh, <laughs> done well. <laughs> Thank God for that. But uh, look, thank, thank God you. For Wikipedia. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be remembered. <laughs> to be to be fair, we're uh, we're Crow supporters. Jason's no, the Carlton one, so. Uh, not sure. <laughs> but we do appreciate you coming on, Cuda, and obviously Jason as well. And we're going to talk a bit about this up and coming clash. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you both, actually, and probably Cuda first. Obviously, the lids are off at Carlton, and uh, you are you, the Carlton are the the owner of the lid, so to speak, or the metaphoric lid. <laughs> Um, what's going on down there at Carlton? How excited are, is everybody right now? I wouldn't go to that extreme, mate. Eh? Don't try <laughs> to put extra pressure on us. We're all just, we're all happy. We're just going along. Oh, I don't know about quietly, but anyway, uh, the lid's off. <laughs> uh, the, boys are, the boys are playing well. Like, we're, we're that excited. We've, we've been deprived of success for so long. Now, let's go back. My day, oh, I don't know why. I always tend to go back, but 1995, I'm 22 years old. I win a premiership. I'm playing the Carlton mm. Football Cup. As I walked in there, there was players that had two premierships, three premierships. There may have even been one that had four who was on the way out. But, like, there was premierships everywhere. So, in 95, you can imagine, not that you, you, you think, but, like, you, you go, okay, there's a good chance I might win another one here. But that hasn't been since. And so, it's, it's amazing to think, in 95, if someone had said, Carlton's not going to win a premiership for the next, well, this should be 29. You just say... You know, 29, 30 years, everyone would have said, oh, you're absolutely mm. mad. This is a mm. football club. But it's been like that for so long. So all of a sudden, they're starting to win now. And uh, the play, the current day players are starting to understand how enormous and how powerful this football club is. It's something they never experienced before. Because when I walked into the Carlton Football Club, it was the biggest club in Australia. There is no doubt yeah. about it. There's no more powerful club 
had money, you know, all these powerful individuals led by John Elliott, and it was the best club to be at. But for many years now, it hasn't been like that. It's been in hibernation, and now you can sense it and feel it, um, how enormous and how incredible it is. And just a, a stat for you quickly, uh, on Saturday, all by Saturday before the game even started, Carlton had sold out of all the merchandise that was there. Wow, that's <laughs> so out of all clubs, yeah, it was only Carlton that sold. That was before they played, so that's how much hype there is around. Yeah, yeah for sure. Amazing. And you were in uh, Adelaide for Gather Round. Uh, how did you enjoy that? Yeah, I loved it. And I, I flew up there with Virgin Airlines on the Thursday to do a promo with them. They had a fan uh, fan flight, and that was an awesome experience. It gave away, you know, a couple of grand final tickets, uh, a signed footy by all the current uh, captains of, the, of uh, this season. They gave out four tickets to the Cullen Freeho game. It was just a wonderful flight, and the, the supporters and fans love it. Also, so I was there for that. And I had a Blues Brothers uh, promo function uh, Friday night with Ange Christus. So I was there with Ange, and then we had a signing there on the Saturday. And then I went to Lions Hotel after that. And uh, the people, there was people everywhere. There was this, the signings at Ange and I did for an hour from 11 to 12 was just nonstop people. The, the line was huge. I could not believe it, like how many people were there and how many Carlton supporters were there. Oh, it's, it's good to hear. And I mean, for what it's worth, um, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm pretty happy to see some success for Carlton. Um, obviously, we, we're not too far behind you guys with uh, drought, premiership droughts, um, 97, 98. Mm. Um, I might actually throw over to Jason because we stitched him up a little bit earlier <laughs> um, and give him the opportunity to I don't ask you. want to talk to Jason. Yeah. You want to talk to <laughs> we'll Give him the opportunity to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, be, to, to be fair, J- Jason does have a, a Bruce Dool tattoo on his leg, so um, that gives you a bit of a gravity of his uh, fandom. <laughs> Jason, over to you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, come on, Jason, yeah. talk like this. No, I was. I'm, He's taking look, it in. No, no, it, it's it's hard to say. He got speechless. It definitely, uh, when they said they had a player on, it could have been someone. Who played one game in the you know sixties and I would have genuinely not known them. It's could have been true. Dennis Armfield. Six, but, <laughs> um, could he? No, hey, look, it's uh, I, I actually uh, just to kind of take it off off topic slightly. Kudo, I got a photo with you a couple of years ago. It's um, there was a soccer event at uh, the Marvel Stadium after a, a game it was uh, Carlton Frio and it was the Carlton Frio game. We didn't kick a score until halftime, goal until three quarter time. One of the worst games that I've seen. And it's just really like to reflect on that and sitting through that stuff to be make the prelim last year and actually talking to you about the good in in a good space rather than you know that photo we got then. It's just quite a quite a bit of a moment. But you know, I think that's for the been the Carlton journey that you mentioned. Really, hey, I'm just pure. I had that photo with you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys frenemies nah, now? No, no, Jason, I'm only joking. Don't be <laughs> I shouldn't, I shouldn't be no, like no. that. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> no, 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 you're right, though. Uh, no. I was frustrated too last it's year. Fair. Round, <laughs> yeah, now round 15 last year, I, I was frustrated. I almost felt like, nah, that is it. I have had enough. I can't do this anymore. And, you know, my poor son, mm. like a lot of the people, you know, my son's 13. Yeah, it's like he's never understood Carl, never really seen a lot of success. He was 12 last year. And I, I felt sorry for him, too. And I was thinking, hey, if he wants to change teams, just go for it. But then, I don't know, like Carl and... Carlton just hung, you know what I mean? They just turned around. I've never seen a team. I reckon they were the second or third worst team in the comp at that stage. And then how they turned it around, and that's the what I believe they have so much talent on that list and why I believe they can go a long way. There is different, definitely the window is open. Not to say that they're going to, you know, they're too good, they're so good they're going to win a premiership, but the, the window's open and they're definitely capable of doing it. It's easy to say that, you know, that, oh, they're going to win a premiership, but it's not easy to do. But certainly now they've got an opportunity to be able to do that. And mm-hmm. speaking to the boys tonight, there's confidence there now too. The, the, the game that they just won on the weekend, you know, it's 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 debatable. You know, the umpiring decision that this that at the end of the day they they got four points. Two years ago, any close game, somehow Carlton would always lose. And there's a fine line between that winning feeling and yep. losing, and it's that you know having that belief. And that's what I feel like now that these guys currently have got that belief now finally that they can win games you know even when they're close like that and that's really important to be able to do that so mm-hmm. I'm really pleased for them I just hope they can continue on we don't want to get carried away it's only you know round five or whatever it is so a long way to go and things can turn very quickly 
Now that's very level-headed of you, Kuda, and but you've got to stop um, saying window open and start using the term lid because that's the correct terminology. <laughs> 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 but, um, word, lead, lead. but the last the last four games the lid. we'll get into we'll get into this week. So the last four games uh, of Crows and Carlton, uh, two at Marvel, two at Adelaide Oval, and the two Marvel ones have been won by Carlton, and the two Adelaide Oval ones won by the Crows. So if that gives you anything, it's probably a bit more confidence going into this week's game at Marvel, especially coming off a four 0 start. So. Um, Kuda, what's your vibe on this week? How confident are you? Sam Walsh back in is a huge in, uh, potentially. Mm. Uh, it's not confirmed, but yeah. uh, it looks pretty likely. Uh, you'd have to be pretty confident. Well, Adelaide have been struggling, so we know that when the team's been down that much, and I still believe it seems to be unfolding a little bit there, but, you know, turn back to the clock last year, Adelaide, that might, they beat Carlton, and they were unbelievable, and sometimes the team have that, that uh, team where they just struggle to, to win. So I'm not going to say, oh, we've got this. I mean, any game, of course, can go either way. But Adelaide are going to come out fired up. There is no doubt because what they're currently do, playing at, it, it's it's not where they need to be. And so everything's going to fire up. But look, Carlton can't get too overconfident. Otherwise, they'll, you know, what were they going to lose? But why should they come back into the team? I mean, he is one of the exceptional players of the competition. And, when you look at last year's finals, I mean, there's, there's always the great players fire, fire up come finals time, and that's what Walsh did. He was the best player, Carlton. Mm. And from what I hear, he's an, an incredible, has an incredible work ethic, and the guy just loves footy. And so finally having him back is really good because the poor guy's just been down in the dumps about his back. So it's going to be really good to have him there. So, look, of course I'm confident that we can win. I mean, Adelaide are struggling. We're, we're a great team. But we can't go in with that sort of mentality, if that makes sense, because any time that happens, we, we get disappointed. So you can uh, never play around with form, and you've got to go out there and just do the very best you can. Now, we are going to ask you, Kuda, in a minute, and Jason, about your, your tip for the Dennis Armfield Award, which uh, for Kuda, if you don't know about this, it's the, the player li- most likely to be played into form by the Crows, um, <laughs> which happened to Dennis um, back in the day. Um, but before we do that, we had a question from one of our regular listeners and collaborators, Kate, um, who said, please ask Kuda how to cope when you are just about fed up with your club. I had a cope. Yeah, how to cope when you're just about fed up. So, you're like, oh, well, you know, like, you, like your son when you told him to go support someone else if he wanted to. <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, my God. No, well, my son was never going to uh, jump ship. He loved Carlton, no matter what, what occurred. Even last year when Collingwood uh, won the grand final, he still brought out his Carlton jump and said, mate, I don't care that Collingwood won. I still love this club here. So, yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, the tide's changed, so we just got to stick through and things. Uh, yeah, I feel sorry more for the St Kilda supporters that have only oh, absolutely. never seen one. That's, I always that's say you got to ride those uh, low lows to really enjoy the big highs, hey, Cooter? You do. That's right. Look at West Coast. I mean, they complain because they've had a couple of bad years. I, I, I tell them every time I go there, don't worry, we've had 20 odd years of it. So <laughs> they can't complain because yeah. they've been a great club. That's it, yeah. All right, guys, we got one more thing, and it's the Dennis Armfield Award. So we're just going to play the stinger for that, and then we'll get into it. Give the kick. Right so we're him. right behind him, and the Carlton fans are right behind him. Once, twice, three times. Oh, look at that. Yes! <laughs> He's the master blaster. And one of the great commentary grabs of all time. I'm sure you can agree, Kuda. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so who have you got? Who do you think is going to hit a, a rare streak of form this week against the Crows at Marvel? You talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I don't you know. Maybe you know what you're talking about. I'm just. Uh, maybe well, Jason can give you. Yeah, I'd love to see. Go, yeah. Jason. Yeah, who you got, Jason? So, sorry, guys. I'm bouncing back. I'd love to see uh, Orazio channel some uh, oh, hey. energy and, <laughs> and have uh, a real real breakout game because the strong chance is he does that and then he does a hammy the next week against GWS. But uh, yeah, that's who I'd love to see really go off the I chain. I think he, he actually had his breakout game seven years ago. Maybe you didn't see that. that was uh, He was playing for Essendon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does that give you a good brief, Kuda? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it does. But I don't know who's been struggling. Boy, they're all playing well for me. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the problem. That's a When we play <laughs> good teams, we always struggle together. You know together. what? Yeah. Yeah. Walsh is the one. Let's just hope he gets I mean, He will anyway. 
he's, yeah. a, he's an absolute champion. I don't think he can he's, play a bad game. No. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. He's unbelievable, that bloke. Yes. Well, I can't say I'm looking forward to the game, but bloody hell, it's been amazing talking to you, Kuda. Yeah, thank you, so much, you thank you so no much. Thank you so much for your time. Should we and tip? Yeah, we should tip. Uh, who you got, Kuda? Who you got for this weekend? No. I think we know your answer. Um, it's tough, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'll go the Blues. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was real tough. <laughs> <laughs> who you got, Jace? A lot of, a lot of struggle. Uh, I, I think I'll have to go go the blues as well, but there's been a couple of little omens this week that um, may <laughs> cause an upset, but we'll see how that goes. But mm. I think Palton might get it by three or four goals. Yeah. Nice one, Sam. Good omen, hey? Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. I think Carlton's going to win too, pretty comfortably. Well, uh, yeah, I think Carlton will win, but um, I'm also going to a wedding this weekend and can't, can't watch the game. So... On that, I guess the Crows are going to win because I'm not going to be able to watch. <laughs> I'm going to I'm, I'm going to go Carlton by four goals, and I think it's going to be one of those painful ones where Mitch McGovern actually is the Dennis Armfield, <laughs> but he's been re- he's been relatively good. <laughs> yeah, he has. But uh, look again, thanks very much, Kuda, for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it at short notice. Yeah, so especially thanks very at short much. notice. Thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure. Have a great night, everyone. You too, thanks, mate. Kuda. Thank you. Baggers. Yeah. Great Bye. to meet you. Here. Jason. Oh, you like that, Jason? We're going to keep you on the line for a minute, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Definition of stitched up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd love it, Jason. I was like, Jason is going to love it if no, we get Cooter on. I absolutely did. But the, the moment you said, oh, we've got a player on, and I'm just like, wait, wait, is this, uh, are they doing like a, a, a grab? Are they going to do like a, a soundboard and they're going to like <laughs> stitch me up that way? And then premiership player, and I'm like, no, they're legit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually didn't even hear the stats. I, all I heard was 200 games, so I kind of got a ballpark. But it was Sam Carriage, Jason. I kind of... <laughs> 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 let, me, let me quickly show you this. This is from... It's very funny you mentioned that. This is from 2019, right? I don't know if you can see it. Mm. And yep. uh, I got a post saying every year that a player gets delisted or retired... <laughs> it's got red crosses on it. <laughs> Sorry, our listeners can't see this. Yeah, I haven't worked yeah, that out yet, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's audio medium, but I'm making yeah. it hard by this poster. <laughs> and there's some names that you probably haven't heard for a long, long time who played uh, a handful of games. You know, there's some good names there, but then you've got like a uh, an Angus Schumacher, Ooh. memorable name, yep. Harrison McCready. Um, oh, I remember McCready. And a, uh, you know, Kim McCready, Kim, Kim LeBoy, the ones that's uh, Lembois. Mm. So names that you probably wouldn't know unless you had that poster sitting in your hand, but um, <laughs> I'm sure they're being prosperous and happy to feel lives uh, getting to play at least one game for the goal, at, for a goal team. At least you know why we were getting antsy with you oh, when you couldn't get your gosh. camera to work before. That was that was why, because Kuda was on the line and we didn't want to. <laughs> we're like, sorry, Kuda, you just have to wait for Jason to get his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, and you almost made an enemy of him. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a stitch up. Anyway, oh, so good. Champagne podcast. That's, just, right that's to thank you for well all the uh, free tickets you've given yes. us uh, over yeah. the last couple of years, mate. Tickets, <laughs> uh, cardboard cutout. No, <laughs> Discarded yeah. Crows uh, media <laughs> walls. <laughs> yeah. Now, nah, thanks, Jace. Oh, yeah. um, I appreciate your time and dialing in as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, may the best team win. You didn't have much to say about the game, though. Has he got anything else to say? No. Nah. didn't actually ask you any questions, Jace. <laughs> Oh, we thought, you know, give Kuda the time. I was happy to take a back seat. 100%. He's, <laughs> how are you, how are you feeling about Carlton's season, season mate? How are you feeling about the season? Because it's been pretty shit hot. Good question. It's early. And I wouldn't answer the same with how I think about the Crows season as well. It's early. Um, you know, you guys kind of started our slump last year. Uh, it was right. We thought we were up and about. You really knocked us back a peg. Um it was nice last year to end it on a relatively positive note. I don't remember much after halftime in the prelim, but <laughs> I think that it's just strengthening. Um, and being a Crows podcast, I think the way that you guys are and listen to last week's episode as well, talk about how things just aren't clicking, there's something missing. And yeah. that was how I was feeling this time last year, roughly this time last year. And all it took was the players to be in the right spot or or, the, or whatever it was, you'd see what you're trying to do and the handle would go a bit too high or the kick would be 
the, the person who kicked it kicked it out. Once that synergy gets there, like uh, that's out, like Kuda said, the back half of our year. And I've watched a bit of Crow's footy. Uh, I'm not as much as you guys. And the way you're describing it last week was it felt like that same point where you see what they're trying to do, but it's so frustrating because it's just not getting not it. So yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to make you guys build you up a bit that, hey, like, Thanks, I mate. know, as Kuda said, I know how much this sucks when you, we, we, we've been, we've been 0 and 5 or 0 and 4 of the, five or six years in the last 10. So hmm. I, I, I yeah. can empathize with the situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Unfortunately. All right. Well, thanks again, Jason. Uh, appreciate <laughs> your time as always. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll get sauce on or no, something. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for having me. And, and I'm still a bit speechless, but I, Stephen Kernahan I was just pointed to that and (laughs) so good Uh, I I do want to throw one little nugget in before I go hopefully it's not too too long I'll just um, sign you off for um, the third time after this (laughs) I'm sorry but this is something that I I had um, the the, I know the season ended really really poorly for you guys last year and um, the umpire was actually back for the first time on the weekend just gone out at Sydney game but um, the flags from that incident are actually sitting in our office at the moment so actually he snapped them after the game threw them in the bin and um they have to be sitting in our office so it's kind of a a juicy like how, <laughs> how, how big that um that moment is that they're sitting there hopefully they get put somewhere um once you guys win a flag you can burn <laughs> <or something. Yeah. laughs> we'll as a symbol them. we'll gold play them yeah. <laughs> we like jason's yeah, bin yeah. finds don't we we do <laughs> 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 Thanks, Jay. We're like in storage container. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <We're Yeah. crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, mate. Love your work. Thanks for having me, guys. No worries. Bye bye. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that, listeners. That was a bit of fun. I enjoyed that. I was like so nervous when that <laughs> you did a very good job off the cuff of that. Oh, nice when you work. said Kuda was coming on, I'm like, I'm going to shit my pants. He's like, <laughs> he is like moderate territory for yeah. me. Like growing up in the 90s, watching footy, he was like, the best player. Just goes much. to show you just got to ask the question and you might get a good response. What a nice guy too. Jeez. Yeah. I hear, like Lovely someone bloke. said, I can't remember who said it in the chat, stop making me like Carlton. I know, uh, yeah. You just like, his passion was uh, was great. So uh, If anyone gets our shitness at the moment, it's Carlton fans. So yeah, <laughs> true. How, how it feels. Definitely for sure. Now, I've got a friend, oh, a lady at work, um, her and her husband are big Blues fans and we always crack at each other at work. So I cannot wait until tomorrow. And I let her know that I've got Anthony Kudafiti's number in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That might be his burner phone. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it probably is now. Let's get into your segment, hey, Sam. Oh, uh, yes, we got, could do we got that. the button? Uh, I'm going to eat this somewhere. chicken. Yeah, you do need to eat chicken. Um, it's cold now. All right. If you want to know what's in the spring, get into Rowan Jarman. Good stuff. All right. Uh, bakeries. I've got a new one for you. Yep. Went up to the hills on the weekend. Crafer's Bakehouse, fairly new from what I could tell. I think it opened in January. Really, really top shelf. What'd you get? Uh, sausage roll, Kransky, and a nice coffee. Didn't get a pie? No, no pie. No. I Because uh, they didn't have any? Or? No, there was pies there, but my stu- I stuck to my standard order. Yep. Uh, for anyone that's uh, a bit of a bakery aficionado, their sausage rolls are very much like Port Elliot, which my mum hates, but I love. So if you like Port Elliot sausage rolls, highly recommend Crafer's. So... Uh, yeah, that was one good thing. Also, Craver's Garden Centre is run by my mate. So is it? Could always, uh, oh, just pop there. in. That's really close. Mm. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, but the best thing. Oh, is that your? Oh. I've got two. Yes. Uh, Kane versus Luke Darcy. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I, Sorry, I, but I, why do I like Kane now? Yeah. Oh, I hate it. I'm so conflicted about him at the moment. I hate Luke Darcy, so yeah. I'm, I'm all on board with Kane on this one. It was... Uh, that was just. That was. Um, it was so premeditated, but so shit. Like it was. What? He, he must like, have thought about that and still decided to run. How with it. uncomfortable was it for everyone else sitting at the panel? Yeah. Like Nathan Brown 
was staring straight ahead like a statue, like he yeah. could not wait to be removed oh, from this what's situation. What's this, Dan? What's this? Oh my god! Oh, it might be Dan's birthday tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, Dan! <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! You got a nice oh, that silver looks so candle. So good. It's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> we're not gonna sit, we're not gonna put everyone through happy birthday. Happy but, birthday, uh, Dan. Yes, happy guys. birthday, Dan. Dan is 40 tomorrow. Yeah. tomorrow. The big 4 0. Yes. yes. Now you're gonna have to listen to me eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> as well as the yeah. Um but yes, no, we're not gonna sing. But uh, happy birthday, Dan. I hope it uh, goes well for you. And I really so hope I can come to your uh, party on the well, weekend. Well, I kinda hope that your child's born on the same day as my birthday. Because oh, that would yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be. Mm. Yeah, that could happen. Then you still could come in like three days. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave Lizzie. I won't, hold come. I won't hold you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the Kane, Kane and Luke Darcy thing. Um, look, uh, Luke Darcy has uh, has annoyed me for a very long time. Uh, I find him horrendous in the commentary box. Can't stand him. Um, and so to, just to have that flat out crack at Kane and then not have really anything to back himself up as yeah, well. Yeah, you can't come at him without examples. Because yeah. you know exactly what his reaction is going to be to that kind of, yeah. you know, torment. No one was on his side, and then he doubled down again too. It was which so was, dumb. Yeah, yeah. And you can see Jason Dunst was just like, "Oh, can we wrap this up? Like, where are yeah. you going with this?" If you're gonna ask him like a question about the way he comes across, you don't just attack him as well like that. Like he was like, "Oh, you know," he was like, "Oh, you can agree that you come across as like mm. um, nasty," and he was like, "Hang on, do I?" Yeah, because that's not what I'm trying to do. No, no. <laughs> I, I I think love him or hate him, what Kane's doing, and in general, probably what you know Sen is trying to do with um, footy coverage isn't a bad thing. You're not going to agree with it all the time, but I think that's better than it just being all soft and everybody hugging each other. Well, he also always backs it up with facts, like whether. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not, like you, he, his facts and like what his point of view is, he always backs it up. I yeah. think at one point he was a bit, <clears throat> you know, silly and a bit mean. Like, yeah, especially when he was, uh, you know, giving tech shit about being fat and you know that. Yeah, kind of, yeah. But you know that was a long time ago. Yeah, and I think he's calm. He's moved. He's on. warmed. Yeah, he's matured. <laughs> <laughs> He's matured like a bit of, you know, a stinky cheddar yeah, in yeah. that time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he does have a point he, most of the time, unfortunately, and especially about the crows at the moment, which is depressing. Mm, yes. But, yeah, I'm backing you on this one, Kane. Maybe yeah. we can get Kane on the pod. I'd like – should we – we need to try and get Kane on the pod, I think. I, I can't find I his – um, I don't want to follow him on Twitter because <laughs> I don't want to sacrifice our credentials. But um, I feel like he would be a pretty fun guest to get on if and he was yeah. interested. And listeners, if we did ever get him on, we would absolutely play your so Kane to him. Yeah, well. obviously. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, think I feel like it. if we surprised you with Kane Corns, you might turn against us. But if yeah. we declare now that we'd have him on – you can give your feedback in the chat. Tell us in, in the, the chat. chat. <laughs> yeah, tell us in the chat. Would you hate to hear Kane on here or would uh, would you find it interesting? Because we'd love to go hard. We'd love to go hard with Kane. Yeah. Feel like he'd give it straight back. I'm going to click Kane, that. this I'm is your open invite, that. mate. You can cut. Like, we want to hear. We actually <laughs> agree listening. with you. No, well, I'll send him the link. <laughs> 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 I'll give him the timestamp and everything. I'm, I, I actually, yeah, like. I hate hearing a lot of the stuff that he says and the way he goes about it, but I actually think he's been more right more often than not this year. Yeah. Um, so he might actually have some good points of view on what's going wrong at the Crows. Mm. Well, do you know who does have some good points? David King. <laughs> anyway, yeah. what uh, Chris Mills go- has got a good point here too, and I should have put this in my goods a few weeks ago, but mm. um, SEN app has a um, sync option. So you can line up the, uh, the audio from the app to Channel 7 or to Foxtel KO. So it delays it so that it lines up perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's a great option, and um, yeah, it's it's. I, yeah, I completely agree with you, Chris. It's great and it means you don't have to listen to. Kelly I didn't Underwood. even know that existed until like three days ago. Yeah, yeah, it's very clever. So no, it's good. They they're doing a lot of the right things that are going to be better for us supporters generally. I think. Can I just say? Um, while reading some of the comments that you guys are leaving. I absolutely love the engagement on this. This yeah. is so good. So thanks for um, yeah commenting throughout yeah, the pod. Most awesome. people seem to um, be into this idea of having Kane on yeah. the podcast. Callum's keen. Like Tom's keen. Kate, yeah. Kate says, uh, I would find it interesting, but I hate giving the man another damn platform. Well, yeah. thankfully, Kate, this is a small platform. It's very small. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> he right. Won't, he won't be uh, too much higher than he already is. Yeah. Uh, look, and I didn't know where to put this, so I'm just going to put it smack bang in the middle, yeah. goods and bads. Did anyone see that Des Hasler NRL coach footage today? 
absolutely flying off at his team. He's the oh, coach he's at a, Gold he's Coast. A, he's pretty toxic, that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. He's probably just a bit old school, I reckon, but absolutely flew off the handles at him, at the players, and it got sort of leaked. It was this, like, um, in the change room style. Uh, yeah, don't see that uh, too often these days, but I don't know. Maybe the Crows need it. <laughs> <laughs> Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman's huge half price sale. Don't miss it. I just want to add a good and it's this cake. Oh, well, I was going to say, Sam, Mr. Good. (laughs) What? Jake Saligo. When we interviewed him last week. I emailed it to you. Do you want to play it? I'll I'll play it. Jake Saligo, we interviewed last week, as you may have heard, and... um, he gave us some. Uh, he gave us some information yeah. that we didn't share with you in the interview. It was technically outside the interview, so I didn't want to put it in yes. the interview we Wait, published. But we will play it. It's also <laughs> what we're now saying is our claim to fame. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you can thank us for everything. Um, thank us for everything. Because without without here we crow, you would get nothing. All right, here it is. The ones that did solid gold is my intro. Yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah, that's my goal song now. Is it? Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> love, yeah. That. <laughs> yes. love that. Well, you can say that in the interview. You can yeah. let us know. So we look good. Uh, <laughs> do we look good, guys? Yeah. Do we look good? <laughs> Off the record, yeah. Love that's that, right. Jakey. Did anyone actually understand what he said? Because uh, you know, it was, was quick. I didn't. I it was. I, I started the audio right when he said it. It was so. just Jake giving us credit for the song that he has for his goal celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, what are, you, what are your bads? My bads. Uh, Rochelle playing Mr. Brightside. Look, Rochelle wasn't playing it. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even press the button. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Rochelle faux DJing in your bads. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, Welcome, Griteo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the hell? Griteo's taken over the chat. Uh, gather around. Uh, just the Vicks whinging about it and saying- Oh, my just God. Why, like, everybody's saying good things about it. Why do we have to have some come out and just start <laughs> speaking? <Matthews>. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. I went to- <laughs> I did a um, – I took photos at uh, the Lee Matthews, Malcolm Blight um, uh, Oh, gig. yeah, you were supposed to get Blighty on the yeah, pod. How'd sorry. you go with no, that? No, I didn't go and no. talk to him. Is that like him. the two old men in the Muppets oh, just like yelling? Malcolm I am a Blight's wuss. a good bloke, man. He'd, he'd give you the time of day. If it was up to me to get these guests on, we wouldn't have any, Lauren, yeah. which I'm more than happy to admit. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's – um. Yeah, uh, yeah. What Tom said, Waitley was definitely on board. But yeah, just a, just a few of the Vicks whinging about it being unequal and saying, well, like you know, we get the home ground advantage, whereas all the Vic teams uh, play at the same ground, so there's not technically a home ground advantage. But then you don't have to travel. Like there's inequities literally everywhere you step in this competition. Yeah. So what? Why does this matter? We lost anyway. So yeah, like, it's not, not like really we're. An advantage. It's not like we're just constantly winning um, in these uh, gather round games. But yeah, anyway. So I. It also, like, it's just one weekend. Yeah, yeah, that's like, right. Like, it's just nothing. Did you, did you have a? Uh, they've come out and said that it wasn't uh, them, but it was clearly AFL throwing something out there just to see what people thought of it. The whole three gather rounds. Oh. Well, what's the point of that? Yeah, I know. Like, you're not gonna. No one's traveling for three gather rounds. No, no. You no, know, that's right. you go on a one. Yeah, and well, that's just going to dilute it. Don't cook it like the Big Bash cooked their competition by just mm. by too much of a good thing is not. You know, is that the? They what's that will, the is that how you say that? No. Will, they, will they listen to the majority of AFL fans with their feedback? Though? I think they will. You uh, reckon? Yeah, I think they. I think they're on board with it, and it seems like they're really happy with what SA is doing. So, mm. uh, like all a, the footy media pundits are loving it. They all think it should stay in Adelaide. It's only been like Lee Matthews and like who was it, Chris Scott or whatever, who came yeah, out. Yeah, he always whinges. They were whinging about it, but like again, like it's not a big deal. No. Adelaide's it makes so much sense to, to yep. have it here. I feel like. At this point, I know we've only had two, so maybe get, I'll get back to you in a couple of years when it's you know near the end of the SA time. But mm. I feel like it's going to be really hard for any city to match what we can achieve here. Mm. Although you know, there's naysayers everywhere. You know, we think we'd be able to do it better in yep. s- Sydney, and it's just like, yeah, well, you're not going to be able to. Mm. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do agree that uh, they need to mix up who plays at the good grounds and who plays at the uh, average grounds, just for um, fans. Um, you know, uh, the, to get fans in, obviously. Yeah. Some of those games sold out really quickly, so they just need to make sure they rotate that. But other than For that, sure. I think it's um, it's absolutely fine. And, you yeah. know, with the game in the Brosser, you know, that'll be absolutely epic out there. Like, yeah. 
to get the tu- you know the tourism happening out there. There's already a massive tourism spot, obviously, mm. but you know people are going to absolutely love the chance to get out there if they haven't been yep. before. Dan and I went to the GWS game, go Orange team, uh, <laughs> and the Suns at, at Mount Barker, and it was fantastic. Yeah, it was so good. It was so great, and mm. like. You know, they had that big bar and um, food thing there that we didn't even notice until the very end. But, like, that looked like such a good – that was, like, test cricket style, like, mm. Pim's bar, you know, hang out on the hill, have a few drinks, watch the footy. Like, it looked awesome. Yeah. So well, it was apparently really good vibe. the Norwood food and wine thing went off on Sunday too. They yeah. brought back before the game. So that's kind of Apparently cool. they did, weren't expecting the amount of people that showed yeah, up. Yeah, they were, there was lines, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, it's great. And like uh, <laughs> like Issy said, meanwhile the Pies play yeah. uh, the <laughs> next four games at the MCG. Yeah. yeah. That's, it's insane. And and to be fair, I don't think um, I don't think Fly's the one out there complaining. It's um, Why are they yeah. not complaining that Port Adelaide have seven home games in ten rounds instead? Maybe mm. whinge about that. Maybe we should whinge about that. I think we should. <laughs> uh, full on deaf ears, wouldn't it? Yep. And yes, uh, here we go. Trip to the Brossa next year is on the Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, we live might do from a the live, live Lindock podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. A few Reds. That'd be nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. What we got? Let's we got? get a Here We Crew Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, what do you get out of there? Uh, one more thing. <laughs> I'm just getting I, ready. I can't put the buttons between me and you because you yeah, get you get a little trigger happy. You're, you're I do. Really I like excited. The, I like you like the, the button. buttons, don't you? Push the right, button. I've got I've got one more bad. Um, and I'm just and I've complained about this many times before. Yeah. Adelaide Oval bar lines. They need to get that shit right. It's they can't blame you COVID were struggling. anymore. You was uh, you guys disappeared and I was like. Oh, we'll just go to the seats and where did I find you? In the bar line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so long and it's just like, I know it was a busy game, but they need to sort the shit out. The bar that we went to, like, I don't want to be ageist. There was four old ladies working it that looked like they were running at like a school tuck shop. Yeah. Like it was just so you, slow. You can't have dinosaurs behind the bar. Oh my God. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome Lizzie. Aren't you busy Lizzie's at the moment? There. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to give that a bit of a whinge because it's uh, it certainly hasn't got any better, and uh, they're just wasting money anyway so mm. by taking that long. Because well, I would have drunk more if I knew that it was going to be easier to get a drink. But uh, just yeah. let us into the fancy bar. Come Man. on. No, they don't want us rabble in there. Come on. Anyway, I'm done. What's next? You're done. <laughs> Oh, yes. I've uh, been very opinionated about this one. <laughs> uh, David Kosh, uh, following on from Jeremy Finlayson's homophobic slur of an Essendon player on, in the game the other night. Boo! Uh, first problem. Bad. The slur itself. Second problem, David Kosh uh, playing it down when asked about it and basically just saying that because the AFL set a precedent by not banning um, Alistair Clarkson for a slur, which they probably should have or very much should have, um, uh, that the, the precedent's been set so Jeremy Finlayson should also not get um, get games for it, which is absolute bullshit. Um, <coughs> Port, I actually would have had a bit of – like. I, obviously hate Port like the rest of us, but would have had a little bit of respect had they come out and made their own decision to ban the player um, for, you know, given their support for the LGBTQ plus community, et cetera, um, the AFLW team, et cetera. I, look, and to be fair, I'm not confident that our team would get it right either, but there was a chance to make a stand and get it right. Someone else said it way better than I did on TikTok, which Lauren posted earlier today, and I wanted to play that audio because I think it sums it up perfectly. Over the weekend, an AFL player used a serious homophobic slur against another player during a game. Legally, that's hate speech, which as a queer footy fan, I reckon is seriously disappointing. Now, he fessed up and apologised to the other player and he's being investigated by the AFL, so I'm not going to talk about him. But I am going to talk about the comments made by the president of his footy club. When it was put to David Kosh that the homophobic slur was comparable to a racist slur that resulted in a player being suspended, he said no. It wasn't. And he talked about benchmarks and said his player should just be fined. Now, I get that he was trying to protect his club from having a senior player suspended, but ranking hate slurs based on who they're directed at is just bullshit, right? Because basically it's the same as ranking the groups those slurs are directed at. Now, he could have said, oh, it's being investigated, no comment, or look, what my player did was wrong, it's up to the AFL to do what they do. But instead, he talked about benchmarking hate slurs because he doesn't want to lose a player because he reckons winning is more important than any harm you might cause and as a queer footy fan that is a kick in the guts 
Indeed. Couldn't have said it better. Thank which you, is Will's why truck. I didn't. <laughs> um, but it's exactly what I was thinking. And, you know, there's some disgusting speech out there on platforms such as X, um, which defend the and basically say people should put up with it and just uh, toughen up, etc., etc. Koshi obviously has a massive platform and he used it for the not the greater good. And that's why he's this week's dog act. <laughs> If you want to defend slayers into the day. <laughs> <Hey>. uh, <laughs> Come on, Dan. Try again. If you want to defend slayers instead of what the player deserves, it's just ignore it for worse. <laughs> Dog act. <laughs> Shit. That was a lot of syllables. <laughs> you didn't make it easy on yourself there, um, but it is a tough subject. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. you got nowhere to hide either now that we're going live. I don't. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. But That's it. Live. That's a dog act. Let's make our footy community safer for marginalised communities, I think. That's that's what we need to aim to do. And that's all we want to do. Seems like podcast. common sense, doesn't it? <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. It's too weird, some may say. So we weird that a, we wouldn't do that. It's just odd. Are we get into bizarre some, behaviour. Some social what are we doing media. Now? Some social oh, yeah. media. We've got plenty of social media. Out of bounds, on the full. Oh, yeah. It's social media. Um, we've got heaps. So we've got lots of comments and we've got, you know, the live audio from the game. We've got messages. we got everything. Lauren, you're driving this one. Oh, am I? Well, you at least oh, wait you until I've uh, uh, connected to the oh, thing. Oh, go on. Do you want some Instagram to start with? I'm then? heaps not prepared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, do we, we want Instagram. Did we put something up on Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we didn't. <laughs> Wait, when you say we, do you mean you? Yeah, I forgot. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, we got okay. we got some stuff from Dirk though. I could go with that. Yes. Yeah. Whatever please. you want, Dirk. Um, rapid fire. Please answer if you can. Do you think there's an amount of losses we endure before we? Ah, uh, what the hell? One of two. This? Two of two. <laughs> In clock. Oh. <laughs> Should what? I go to the voicemails? Yes, please. I'm trying to work this out. <laughs> All Sorry, right, Dirk. now we did get a few voicemails on Thursday. Uh, let's hear them now. Hi, team. Kate, local doppelganger oh. here, Matilda. Oh, it's Just not Kate. to <laughs> reflect on the uniquely Crows experience of being a basket case for three weeks in a row and then being genuinely disappointed when we lose to Melbourne. We were nearly there in so many moments, so many more moments than last week at least, nearly putting it together, but then our disposal or decision-making or complete inability to kick a goal shoots us in the foot. Overall, looking better. I mean, it's season over, um, <laughs> but it's just over in a nicer way now. <laughs> Let's keep playing the kids. I want to see Nank and Cookie and Paddy out there again next week. And maybe we should get a Saligo special happening at Zambero's. For every oh, yeah. Yeah, good idea. That's what Thanks, we should have. See you next week. That's actually a good point, Matilda. We should have asked Lego what he has on his burrito. Yeah. What kind? What does he order? Be What's the order? We'll ask him next time we have him on because I'm sure we'll have him on again. Yeah. Uh, not sure who this one's from. How you going? It's Adam. I got nothing to say, but fuck. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't apologize. Who was that? Yeah. Uh, is it? I think it's Ashim. Was it Ash? Ashim. Yeah, Ashim. Not sure. But anyway, anyway thanks uh, for that. Tom from Discord did send us. Uh, he left us a couple of messages. But look, um, due to time constraints, I'm not going to play both of them. But I'll play your first one, Tom. Uh, it's not you. Oh, it's us. Hey, boys and girls, it's Tom here. I tell you what, I am very thankful that I've had about sixteen fucking beers. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> we are we are screwed as a football club. It is. Oh, I'm throwing in the can. The season's done. I'm, over, I'm probably overreacting, but Jesus Christ, it's been four weeks of absolute putrid crap. And we're not playing. We're not playing any young players, especially in that medical location. And it's it's so frustrating to see. We're surely last year in the first several rounds. We were so pivotal in our ball movement last year, and now it's become an absolute. You know, we're a laughing stock. We're a laughing stock of the league. It's like an absolute joke. I, can't, I honestly am so frustrated with what's going on. I don't know if... This, I, I, you know, I kind of expected it down here, but this is a joke at this point. 
Love the party. Probably going to regret this later. Later, but uh, <laughs> she's throwing me back. Too late. Catch you guys later. Look, Tom, Thanks, Tom, we'd much rather you call us than five double A. That's definitely yeah. that's for sure. And I'm gonna I haven't actually listened to your other message yet because it's two minutes long, but I will get to that. Maybe we can release it as an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, episode. Yeah. Did any, did that shit club thing happen again on the weekend? What shit club thing? The after oh. after game thing. The Graham no. Did that even happen? No no no. Oh. What? Graham Corns and the other person. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did Crows Live. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. you meant the after party for a sec. Yeah, oh. yeah, it did. Oh, it did. And uh, I actually tuned in while I was um, waiting on the train to leave the train station because oh, no, yeah, right. I was interested. Um, and uh, Corns, Graham Corns wasn't on it, but uh, oh. Sam Sauce Jacobs was on it. Oh. And um, I think he said that Riley O'Brien played well and then I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> did he um, did he say we haven't been good since we dropped um, uh, Kings of Leon? <laughs> no, my hero. My hero. <laughs> my hero. <laughs> That's definitely. I kept thinking friends. of Sex on Fire. No, no. yeah. Uh, I do okay. have um, a text message from a friend of the pod, Jaden, that I want to read. It's uh, again another lengthy one, but um, we got another text message uh, from. Oh, that's, what does it say? Look at that. We attack the corridor and a kick in two handballs later. There's a fucking goal. Regards. Jake from the Torrens Arms Hotel. Uh, oh, thank you, Jake. Yes, Jake. Uh, we've got a wowee fucking hell, heel, fucking hell even. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, I, I've, I've worked Dirk's oh, you message worked, out. Yep, tell, he, said, to us. he said, rapid fire, please answer if you can. Do you think there's an amount of losses we can endure before we... <laughs> Scrub <laughs> daddy. daddy. I don't know. Oh my I god! He can actually see that he's got. He's given us. Send us a picture of a scrub daddy sponge. Yeah, I didn't um, realize that was a thing. So <sighs> anyway, that was that was what I was trying to get to before. Uh, in close in closing, I heard two nicknames I liked over the weekend. Thought you might like them: the blind melon and, and the silver <laughs> circus. Thanks, gang. The oh silver circus. Soza, how Stop much it. did it suck having the same ten songs played at every ground for every match for every goal? How can clubs afford forty different songs, but the AFL can't swing it? So stingy. Yeah, I noticed that too. There was a lot of the same music over the weekend oh. and a lot of different games. Yeah, In fact, we, we heard the same songs at um, Mount Barker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Oh well, what about... Oh we didn't God. hear that the same... Not all the same songs. We heard An abomination. one of the worst mashups I've ever heard in my life. Mm. What was it again? It was like... Wonderwall. Yeah, no, and it was yeah, Wonderwall and Back in Black. Back in Black, like mashed up. Don't ever oh, play that. that. Oh, that yeah. is. I know what awful. you're talking about. Yeah, that was terrible. I, I wanted to kill myself. I told that Lauren. was awful. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, whoever DJed that. Don't do that again. Ever. Mm. And ever. Tom, Tom, you're right too. That uh, yeah, every that, what the players love about Adelaide clip every game. That was um. Yeah. Look, I'll, I'll take any compliments from... Oh, well, Isaac. yeah, it was nice hearing a lot of nice things said about Adelaide, wasn't it, over yeah. the weekend? Well, like, let's I bask that. in that. Yeah. Yeah. We all know it's people great. People know that we're good. <laughs> I, kept, I kept telling people that were writing Adelaide was so great on Twitter, like, can you shut up? Stop telling people about us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, now, right. I've got a message uh, from Jaden. Uh, oh, Hull. yes, Jaden's good. Now, this is Thursday, 8.40 p.m. <laughs> so the game isn't over yet. I'm, assu- I'm assuming this is half time. Fresh. Excuse my language, but what the fuck did I say last week? Long kicks down the line, tired kick and a lazy kick. Darcy Fogarty, 45 minutes played, 75% time on ground, five touches. Send him back to Ross Trevor in the SAAFL. <laughs> Matt Crouch, 12 touches for 75 metres gain. Good to see he's recaptured his 2016 to 2021 form. Send Mitch Hinge back to Bordertown too while we're at it. Four. Jaden was not happy, but here we go. He's got full time thoughts. And he said, long again, sorry. Okay, here we go. Brand of football we play is Bush League. Long kicks down the line again and again and again. Save your money on tickets and just go support your local A-grade team and you'll see the exact same product. Forward line lacks cohesion and a top dog. They're confused about who's calling the shots. No clear number one forward to say, get the hell out of my way. Didn't I say that? That text, Mm. are you saying anything, mate? They're all getting each other's way. Rochelle and text in fourth quarter. Rochelle being allowed to just bomb it in from 50, 60, 70 metre out. He did it a fair few times, which again tells me there's no one in the forward line pulling rank and pulling anybody up about their poor decisions. Fog, where are you, leader? Jones was good. I thought in midfield tonight. Just too small for Petrarca. Drafted a midfielder and you played him in midfield. Wow, good job, Crows. <laughs> Saligo, great again. Drafted a midfielder and you played him in midfield. Wow, good job, Crows. If Parnell plays, he needs to be in the forward pocket. Too small in height 
and wait, he got bullied tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm. Send him home with a Jason Costana Kast- Kast- highlight tape and ask him to study it. George Costanza. Jason Costana? Am I saying that right? Oh, Kastagna? Kastagna? Yeah. He played for Richmond. Jaden, you can't send names like that without giving <laughs> me a, like the phonetic spelling. Yeah. Uh, Send Mitchell Hinge back to Bordertown. Said that already. Worrell and Michael Annie should probably crawl into the nearest hole and hide from the selectors next week. Oh, that's a bit rough. Nah. Jaden, you're harsh, mate. They you have to come dare. on the pod, mate. You have to come on the yeah, pod. Yeah, they wouldn't to. dare drop Weasel or um. Oh, we Max. can't. We've got no one. No, no. true. Oh, um, they've, they've got um, Egypt. Oh. <laughs> you can't surely say that. We've seen, surely we've seen the uh, the Oz? what we're going to see from him. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no thanks. Um, and then Parnell, they play Parnell in the back line because he can kick, um, but he's just he is just too small like a, to play that role. I know Caleb Daniel does it and has mm. done it over the years, but the problem with um, uh, Parnell in our back line is that they are under siege, so you can't really hide him when uh, when he, when some size is required. So yeah, yeah, didn't, agree, didn't look good on the weekend. Agree with Chris. Um, yeah, back line is actually holding up. Considering, um, and you know, we we don't have those intercept defenders like everyone else seems to have. They're, no, they're just dominating. And Philly, Philly really is a pivotal player in that forward line, just because he's absolutely massive and he draws defenders to him. So losing him, I know that output wise, we probably question exactly how much Thilthorpe's done uh, over the last couple of years. But he is, I think he's been a big loss. He, yeah, absolutely. Functioning. He, yeah, he was one that could take a contested mark around the ground, which can't be understated now yeah. that we have no one that can. <laughs> well, that's right. Literally, exactly. like no one yeah. that can. Yeah, he always used to. can't, no one can. No, no. <laughs> well, Tex is certainly isn't. Tex is hurting. Tex shouldn't be playing. Tex, yeah, I, I would drop Tex as well, to be fair. Like, unless they think he's genuinely going to play into form, like he is dropping everything that comes to him. Yeah. Like, even uncontested stuff he's dropping. Yeah. I don't know who said it. I can't remember now. I heard it, so I'm not going to pretend it was me who's, who said this, but it summed Fogarty up absolutely perfectly. Fogarty does what he needs to every week to get picked, mm. but he's never going to be a good player. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't seem to break the game open. No. Nah. I think it might have been David King actually. Yeah, he said a lot of smart. Things I haven't about seen. Us, I, I haven't <laughs> seen. So it. smart that Nixie went out of coffee with him. Yeah. It's like, I, I need your help, mate. Yeah. I desperately want to see Fog um, get going, mm, but I just kidding. there's nothing I've seen that suggests he's ever going to break open no. right, and be a star. Yeah. Like, no, I, I, I wish I, more than anything that he would. Yeah, he's just he's he's been a he came into the system as a big player, and we just sort of hoped that there'd be some trajectory from yeah. there and it's just never quite happened, does it? Well, he's just as good as he was in his first year right now. Yeah, well, that's right. Exactly. Like, there's yeah. no trajectory. Yeah. I was almost going to say, he's still so young again, but then I remembered yeah. I did that last time and then, no, he's not. No. Well, and even like on yeah. the weekend, sorry to dig in on Fog, but like even on the weekend, he did like stopped short of going for a goal outside of 50. Yeah. Where like in his first year, he kicked one on the run from outside 50. Yeah, yeah. So like, what's going on there? What Chris says here, trade Fog, we like even, if we even if he was uh, had a lot of value, we wouldn't do it. But I don't think he we're has bloody value. hopeless at doing that. Mm. Making the tough calls on players, and he's from SA, so they want to you know they yeah. wanna get rid of him. Yeah, we needed to do it when he had some proper value. Right now, I don't think he really does. Nah, get yeah. us pick, he'd get us like a round four pick or something. Yeah, it would be bugger all. Yeah. So uh, what else? What do we got? We not there's that it. Oh, Bozza. Bozza. Yeah, right, I did say that um, we were hoping that Nixie was going to swing the axe this week. So I love to see uh, where Bozza's axe is swinging in the sauna tonight. <laughs> Good evening, people. <laughs> Round zero and five from the sauna selections this week. Um, I haven't even had a chance to have a look at the injuries yet, so you'll have to excuse me if these are wrong. Come on, Bob. <laughs> but Jeez. I've Jeez. got under pressure here. three changes. Jones, Hasbother Parnell, <laughs> and Barry out. <laughs> Curtin, Dowling to debut. And Gallant to come in as sub, just to uh, fling him on and hopefully uh, pluck something out of our ass <laughs> in Melbourne this week. Anyway, that's about it. Very Deborah, until we uh, talk to you next week, hopefully with an upset. 
That'd be Thanks, nice. Boz. Thanks, Boz. Thanks, Bozza. That would be nice. Um, yeah, I don't see the upset happening, but um, yeah, that would be that would be lovely. Uh, Issy, if we trade out of this draft for Petty, I'm out. I yeah. 100% agree with you, and that whole situation has got real gross now. If we're mm-hmm. likely oh, to end no. up with a top five pick. And we've sort of uh, done the old uh, Promise Melbourne. We're trading our first pick we, this we year. We surely can't do that. He is not any different to Fogg, yeah. I don't think. Well, really. he, didn't, he didn't perform very well on the weekend, did he? Yeah, he, he couldn't but, kick a goal to save himself. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he did kick one in the end, but he missed some shockers. I'm sure he'd be a good complimentary player to have on our team, but he's going to replace like Burgess or something. I think he'd be fine. He's kind of the size, he's the size we need. Yeah. But I don't know if he's it. No. Nah. Um, he's, not, know, he's not a top pick. Do you know who I'm warming to that if you'd asked me last year whether I wanted him, I would have said no way, but Will Hayward. Mm. So like the Sydney player that sort of plays that high half forward role, but he's quick, can tackle, he's got decent skills. Is this because he bought a bike? Sorry? He bought a bike. Yeah. Did he? He got on Twitter and told, told everyone that he bought a bike. <laughs> I didn't see that, no. Oh, um, but um, I I would have said last year with like our forward line working as well as it, it is that uh, he would have been surplus to requirements and sort of one of those picks that were like, why would we waste time getting him in? But he sort of feels like a player that we really need now, being that sort of mm. mid-sized, decently skilled type of player. So hopefully those rumours are true. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he's just trying to talk up his contract or if he, you know, if Dawson's in his ear or something. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Is he from SA? Yeah. 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 So that could work in our favour. And he's, yeah, like um, Tom's just said, he's a free agent. Oh, Young Bean has said he's a free agent too. So, cool. yeah, it should come fairly cheaply if we are crossed. interested, which would be nice. It would be silly not to be. Yeah. Tom uh, also said, surely Guy Sebastian being the Crows' new number one ticket holder gets a mention. Yeah, well, he was there when we went uh, last Wednesday, wasn't he, Lauren? Yeah, we went to, uh, when we went to interview Jake and watch the training, uh, I did spy Guy Sebastian out on the ground. Talking to our, uh, you know, other musician, mm. Isaac Rankin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who was our last number one ticket holder? Was it Leighton Hewitt? Would have been Leighton Hewitt, wasn't it? Oh, did, was there one in between? I don't know. I thought it was a female. Where you gone, Lele? Was it a female? Someone will know on the chat. Yeah, someone will know. Um, also, up. don't forget um, Pete's Pizzas. Oh, my God. How, How could, we forget? could I forget? Uh, you can't forget because we've got another graphic. Don't that worry. Is a great this, is, this is some crowcast levels of graphics happening here. Pete's doing our job for us. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is that Pete sends it so quick that I forget he's. Yeah, it. I know he does you it. Know what I mean? He sort he's of like, does it over the week. It. He's, yeah. he's, he's doing it while he's feeling it. You know, yeah. Pete. If you want to keep doing this, please do because it's great. We love it. All right, let's see what Pete's got for us. Hi everyone, welcome to Pete's Pizzas. Thanks again to the Here We Crew crew for giving us all a platform to commiserate together. So I'm going to give you three takeaways to chew on after our incredibly frustrating game versus Melbourne. First up, it's when your mum says, we're having pizza tonight, but then you realise it's the McCain three-year-old frozen mini pizzas from the bottom of the freezer. (laughs) Nobody wants that, and yet Nick's has reheated our game plan from 2021, (laughs) and anyone remotely associated with the Adelaide Football Club knows that's not a winning formula. Mm. So how the hell do we get here? Second is the magnificent Supreme Pizza loaded with pepperoni, ham, chorizo, mushroom, onion, olives, capsicum, mozzarella, cheese. But hang on, what's this? The base is burnt to a crisp. We have a bunch of fantastic young players like Saligo, Max, Nan Curvis, Worrell, Cook, Keane, Rochelle, Pedler, Berry. But underneath them, a group of burnt out older players that keep getting in the way and letting us down. <laughs> Nick's needs to say goodbye to the senior players. Put his faith in the kids. We've been saying this for three years. It's well overdue. Too right. And the third pizza, I'm sad to say, is a bitter asparagus radicchio and lemon pizza. <laughs> it's horrible. Nobody wants it, but it's all we've got. So we just need to chew down on it and hope that we can get some tastier pizzas next week after our game against Carlton. Thanks, everyone. Oh, well done, <laughs> Pete. Pete. I think that's Fantastic. now nice work. my favourite part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Love uh, it. And I'm sorry, I did ask uh, some sort of image generator to give me that image. I'm really sorry that it's given you some weird <laughs> googly-eyed man. I, I also asked AI to put feces on the pizza, but it didn't do a very good job of that. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> well, most of these things oh are God. bad. So, well, certainly are at the moment. But uh, yeah, apologies for that AI rubbish. Hopefully, the pizza starts looking better as uh, as we go on. Yeah, maybe. I think yeah. they will. I'm yeah. enjoying watch uh, seeing the trajectory. We might have to do a, maybe a montage of uh, Pete's pizzas at the end well, of the year. We Co- might have to do a cook up of these pizzas oh, at yeah. the Christmas. Show. We'll get the kitchen to make them. Yeah. They'd love doing that. Not the feces give him, ones. We'll give them the pizza, <laughs> pizza menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Pete. Yeah, thanks, Pete. That was great. Do we have any more for social media? Or I think we, done? we forgot to put out call outs. So yeah, um, we kind of like stopped doing that because we're just talking on this live thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't have anything else. I don't think. No, oh, I think we're good. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, this week obviously we have Parnell out uh, against Carlton. Uh, who? Do, what else? What other changes do we actually think will happen? Uh, did Bozza plant the seed for anything you actually think will happen, or <laughs> any other thoughts? Nah. Oh, well, like what he said was was you know would be good. Oh, absolutely. I, we rarely we, disagree. No, we yeah exactly. Uh, I think we need to back the players in. I would be devastated if we drop cook this week after you know playing him you yeah. know whatever position that was uh and not not really giving him the chance to shine i thought what he did was fine he made some mistakes but that was his first game in a long time so i think that's fine i mean Curvis has to stay that'd be crazy yep. to do anything there agree um i'd love to see peddler back in um uh i just want them uh, like i don't care what they do i just want them i just want us to be um I just want us to do something with that midfield. I think the problem that we have is if they go and, and um, Issy's just called it out, Burgess out. I think Burgess could be out given that he was subbed, but they could back him in as well for a, just a, you know, it was probably his first really bad game. Burgess had a couple of good games there, yeah. but I think he showed why he played uh, twos for the Gold Coast yeah. the last year. And that He's definitely game. not a, um, a first choice player if you're a good team. Yeah. Um, by the looks of it anyway. Um, if they just go for backing everyone in and just... Um, um, replacing Parnell, who's injured, mm. you know, it, based on position, you'd say it's probably Shoal. If they take out Parnell and put Shoal in, but that's what you, I'm not watching. <laughs> all right, but who else are they going to replace Parnell with on a halfback uh, flank? Right. Oscar Ryan. Uh, Oscar Ryan. Well, you'd yeah, love but they're to never going to do it. Are they, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't. And, do it. and what should go in the bads as well is this stupid shit Sandful uh, fixture. Yeah. How crazy is it that we've played one game and what are we at round five, six? Like it's crap. Uh, look, uh, to those saying on the on the chat there, absolutely would love, love, love to see either Oscar Ryan or Dan Curtin. I just can't see it based on the history of our club. I think, Iz- <laughs> I think Izzy's onto something with Hamill there. Like, yeah, like Hamill. He's definitely, he trained in the, well, he played with the 22s in the preseason, in the trial game. I think I'd love to see Hamill um, as long as he doesn't get another head knock. It um, would be awesome. Um, They've backed themselves into a corner with Dowling and they can't play him this week after not it playing seems him like last it, hey. week. And yeah. Van Berlo saying that. Oh, they've got no interest in playing Dowling at the moment. I, like, it's you so just know dumb. it. Do you know what? I want to be, I don't know, I can't predict what's going to happen on Thursday with selection. I want to be pleasantly surprised. I know what will happen. Matthew Twitter Nick, melts down. Yeah, well, <laughs> look, like I said, Daddy Nix made a pretty big statement in that post-match press conference. I've noticed that. I don't uh, believe anything BB, he says. Yeah, he BB also told has us since diluted that <laughs> message. <laughs> yeah, so. He also told us that he'd worked out the problem last week yeah, and then well, made and then made six changes. Yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> so two force, but still two force. But yeah. you know, um, let's just see what happens. But I'm going I, to. I'm going to have very low expectations. One question I do have before we wrap it up is if Burgess does get rested or dropped mm-hmm. this week, who comes in for Burgess? Oh, Dragon. Oh, and dragon for sure. Is it we Dragon will, time? No, it's Galant. It'll we, be Galant over we Dragon. We will get spanked if, that, if that's where we're thinking. If that's, our, if that's our mindset, we're done. I'm worried. Yeah. I'm very worried. Well, the you, know, you know Lockie's coming in over Dragon. You'd you know hope, that. You would certainly hope. For anyone that wants to watch a more interesting game than probably watching the A's, the Sandful side plays at 2.30 on Saturday up at the uh, historic X convenience oval. My oh. old hood. Yeah. <laughs> Go dogs. Did you know that that was what it was called? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. It just suits it so well. It does. <laughs> That's brilliant. Also, heads up, the uh, the X convenience burgers joint on Anzac Highway on the weekend does $5 burgers. Okay. Just, a, just a little heads up. And they're actually really good. Oh, well, I was waiting for that part. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're genuinely good. So they're very cheap. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Well, <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's Sam's tip. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for episode 85 of Here We Crow. We hope to have Ben back very soon. I'm sure you're all missing him and his dulcet tones. Um, thank you, Lauren. Thanks. 
Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Daniel. And thanks, everyone, again, for engaging with us on the live stream and tuning in as usual. We love you all. Thanks, Kuda. And thanks, oh, Jason Morrison. Thank you so much, Kuda. What a great time. All right. Enjoy Bye your guys. week. Let's get a win this week. Fingers crossed. Gross. <laughs>